We are back in Yosemite National Park. What secrets does this place hide? And why park rangers post anonymously about their horrific experiences while working in National Park on various social media? Few places are quite beautiful as Yosemite National Park. Yet not all people who visit this beautiful park have feel-good stories about it. In any case, tonight we'll spend an hour to talk about scary horror stories that took place in Yosemite National Park. Just a quick notice, we passed over 12,500 subscribers today and we are closing in on that 13,000 subscribers. So don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and hit notification bell. Thank you. And now, start. This may be very disturbing to some of you. I could never tell this story in person, but it's easier to type it for some reason. When I and my wife were quite a bit younger, we decided that we would spend the bicentennial outdoors. Yes, July of 76. We're old. We lived in Pueblo at the time, and decided to go hiking, fishing and camp along Yosemite National Park. There wasn't anything other than brookies in the creek, but they were plentiful and fun to catch. We left our car by the side of the road along road about 5 miles in from the highway and packed in upstream along the creek with our shepherd, Rebel. It only took us about an hour to get to where we wanted to camp, a nice meadow beside the creek just before a slot canyon that required you to swim to get any further upstream. Either that or take a several mile detour. We camped uneventfully that night, the 3rd of July, enjoying the sounds of the rippling creek and nature all around us. It was such a nice night that we just slept out under the stars, didn't bother to pitch our little backpacking tent. A little cool, but we had the fire going in our lightweight 30 degree bags, so we were very comfortable. The next day we had breakfast, packed up and we all swam our way up the creek to the next wide spot with a bit of bank in the canyon, only about 150 yards or so. Now Rebel was never one to turn down a chance to get wet, but we had to do quite a bit of coaxing to get him to follow us up the creek. We fished and splashed upstream a bit, and before we knew it it was lunchtime. We thought we'd fry up some of those brookies but we were in this slot canyon that terminated in a fairly deep pool with about a 10-foot rocky waterfall at the end of it. We decided that I would scale the waterfall and pull the dog and the packs up and then I'd help Maggie get up. It was fairly difficult, even with the help of an old cable left over from a mining operation that was hanging down the side wall of the canyon. It took a lot of effort and though we finally made it, we looked back down that waterfall and wondered what the heck we were thinking. Rebel was none too happy about it either, and seemed to get more irritable by the minute. We found enough driftwood at the rocky top of the falls to get a fire started and get the fish fried up, but that was about it. You know the uneasy feeling that several others have mentioned? It was like a switch turned on and we all of a sudden became aware of our surroundings. It grew like a cancer and I actually watched the hair on the back of Rebel's neck stand up. Maggie felt it too and we both noticed that it was getting dark fast down in this canyon. First thought in my head was a cat, and I actually felt a bit better about that because I figured the cat would leave us be, between the fire and the dog. I told Maggie what I thought and she seemed to feel a bit better, too. I did not want to get caught in the dark in the canyon, for a bunch of reasons, flash floods etc. I spied what looked like a mine shaft about 200 feet above us, a heck of a steep climb, but it looked like our best bet. We pulled out our flashlights and by the time we reached it it was pitch black. The dog was a mess by this point, whipping around in circles, whining, yelping and generally being a real pain in the ass. Maggie and I were drenched with sweat and immediately began to freeze. July in the mountains is a weird thing, I have seen blizzard conditions before, but this was like someone turned on the deep freeze. We were at what looked like the start of a mine, it only went back about 10 feet, but there was evidence of fires at the mouth, and they curiously looked fresh. I was too tired to think more about it, 
I knew we had to get out of our wet clothes, pitch the tent, and climb in our bags before we got serious hypothermia. That was no fun, let me tell you, having to do all of that by the light of our rapidly dying flashlight. And there was no firewood anywhere close. I cursed myself several times for letting things get this far out of control. We finally got the tent pitched right there in the back of this little cave, buck naked as we had no dry clothes left. The sleeping bags were slightly damp too, even though we had stuffed them in plastic garbage bags before our swimming expedition up the canyon. We froze. It was miserable. About one in the morning I called Rebel into the tent for a little heat. The dog seemed to have calmed down greatly, and with the added heat we drifted off. Sometime during the night I heard something that just about woke me, I was still in a haze, so I fell asleep again immediately. I woke up one other time, because I thought I heard Rebel yip a little bit, but again I was in and out. I put my hand out to pet his head and he licked my hand. I fell asleep again. Maggie later said she fell asleep the same time as I did but never woke up at all during the night. I woke to the most horrible noise I have ever heard come out of a hundred pound woman. Just the most god awful shrieks that I have ever heard. I never want to hear that again. I opened my eyes just in time to see a man at the mouth of the shaft, silhouetted against the morning daylight, looking back at us with the most twisted evil grin I have ever seen on the face of another human. I scrambled to get free of my tightly zipped bag in the little tent while he just crouched there and grinned. When I was just about free, he disappeared. Now, we were granola crunching tree hugging anti-gun nature freaks at the time, so the only thing I had of any consequence as a weapon was my camp knife. I found it after what seemed like hours of searching, but really was probably under a minute. I very cautiously made my way to the entrance, millimeters at a time. The guy was gone. About that time Maggie started screaming and whimpering again so I rushed back to the back of the shaft. She had struggled out of the tent and was pointing at what used to be Rebel. His head was nearly severed, and the tent and the bags were ruined with the blood all over everything. She had blood all over her, so the first thing I did was make sure she was not injured. Then I checked myself. We were okay, it was all Rebel's blood. We put on our still damp cold clothes from the night before and then we noticed that our boots were gone. We were in trouble. I had some paracord, so we tied some shirts and towels around our feet and climbed back down towards the creek. We left everything in the mine, except for the knife and some stuff that we shoved in our pockets. It took us eight hours to get back down to the car, and we were like hamburger. Hands, feet, arms and legs scraped raw, bruised and bleeding. We jumped in, the car started right up thankfully and we left a dust cloud that blanketed the valley as we sped down the rough trail. We limped into the sheriff's office and we looked like hell. We got our story out, my wife threw tears and me talking way too fast. But finally got it all out. The deputy said that they would go out first thing in the morning and asked us to stay in town. We had no money for a hotel. So he let us stay in a cell after we showered and changed into prison jumpsuits. We were there at the jail waiting when the expedition returned with the convoy of three trucks. I noticed that all the officers, who were quite wet and filthy, gave us dirty looks as they passed us, and the deputy that we had talked to the day before herded us back to his office. Then came the interrogation. Turns out that some animal had spread the dog's remains all down the slide to the creek and he said that there was nothing else there. No tent, no backpacks, nothing. He asked us if we had any drugs. I did not want to admit to him that we had some herb, so I denied it. It was clear that we were fighting a losing battle. They had come to the conclusion that we were wandering out in the woods high on LSD while a mountain lion had gotten our dog. The bastard even made us change back into our filthy clothes and give back the jumpsuits right then. He told us that he had better never see us again. We left. Maggie was sobbing. I never have been back to Yosemite. The thing that I still have nightmares about years later, and I have never mentioned this to Maggie, is. The second time I woke up when I heard Rebel yelp, was that when his throat was cut? And if it was, 
Was it the dog who licked my hand before I fell back asleep? I still go out in the wilderness, never overnight, out well before dark, only with other people, and always with a big gun. I respect animals, but I fear people. I was out walking alone along some train tracks in Yosemite National Park about 10 years ago. The tracks passed through a state park, and on either side it was nothing but forest. I came to a 500-foot train tunnel that goes through a steep hill. True, it wasn't so long, but it was really dark in the middle, and I didn't have a flashlight. I walked in, and as I went forward, the temperature dropped considerably, I could barely see anything and all around me were the reverberations of my own footsteps and of water dripping evilly from the ceiling high above. The thought occurred to me that there could be someone or something hiding right along the wall about 20 feet away, and I wouldn't be able to see it until the last minute. I was scared, but I kept walking. Then, right as I was near the middle of the tunnel, I suddenly walked into some big obstruction that blocked my feet and went all the way up my shins. I looked down and between the tracks I saw an amorphous shape that I couldn't make out, but along with it, I could clearly see a set of white, canine-like teeth grinning up at me. It was almost like a scene out of one of the aliens' movies. Instead of running, I froze and stared at it. I think I backed up, but I didn't run or turn my back to it. After calming down a little and letting my eyes adjust, I quickly realized that it was in fact a cryptid. The head was pointed upwards and the front teeth were exposed, and at first they looked like a carnivore's. I let out a big sigh of relief, which just turned around and escaped. On a side note, that tunnel is actually located very close to an abandoned asylum that many local kids like to visit for thrills, I was headed there myself during the aforementioned incident. The place is very creepy and isolated and is kind of a bad vibe. I went up there again a few months ago, taking the same route, and saw a very large, dead snapping turtle next to the tracks not far from where that thing was, but outside the tunnel. The turtle had maggots and ants crawling all over it and stunk obscenely, even from 15 feet away. This happened two years ago. I was hiking alone in a Yosemite National Park on a trail around early fall. It wasn't really hot as there was a cool breeze coming while I was taking a break eating some food. This was around 3 so it was sort of a late lunch. Feeling full, I sort of dozed off a bit. Woke up around an hour and a half later, I realized it was getting late. So packed up and started hiking the remaining 4 miles. The sun usually sets around 8 or even later in my neck of woods during summer times. With daylight saving during fall. It was kinda getting dark around 5. So it was getting a bit dim, around 2 miles left, I heard rustling of leaves behind. Did a quick turn and saw nothing. I was like just pesky squirrels. Continued the hike here some more rustling, I just shrugged it off. Until I had a feeling of being punched in the gut. In my mind, I thought I ate something bad for lunch. So, I decided to move in a faster pace to reach my car don't have any TP. I was walking uphill now, and when I got on top of the hill, I felt my soul flew out of my body and almost crap myself. There was a frickin' crawler on top of the hill. I almost went down rolling, but the funny thing is that I spooked the thing as well. At first I thought it was jumping towards me, but instead it leapt back and made a quick run. I know that you may think it's a coyote, but I saw a bunch of them and I can promise you it wasn't. About three years ago, when I was 16, I was taking a walk through one of the timbers a few miles from my Yosemite. I had been there for a few hours, just enjoying the peace and quiet, and decided to head back for supper. I was about one quarter of the way through the timber, when I suddenly got that hairs on the back of your neck stand up feeling. My heart rate went way up, and I could barely suck in a breath. For a few seconds, I didn't dare move. I wanted to run like he, but my instincts told me not to. I had a strong feeling I was being watched by multiple somethings, from different directions. 
I didn't know if they were people, animals, or something else. I just knew I didn't want to be there anymore. Here in northwestern Illinois, the most dangerous thing you're likely to run into in the woods is a pack of coyotes, which is usually no big deal, as they will likely leave you alone if you don't mess with them, they're not starving, or they don't think you're a threat of any kind, so this was defiantly weird. I had my knife with me, since guns are prohibited in national parks. I gathered my nerves, and slowly walked out of there with my head on a swivel and my ninf at low ready. Never saw whatever it was that gave me that feeling, but I'm 100% certain I wasn't alone in the woods that evening. I've taken a lot of walks through that timber since, but I haven't had that feeling again. Me and a buddy went camping in a place that's a part of Yosemite National Park. We expected to stay around three days. First day slash night was uneventful and peaceful. On the second day, around mid-afternoon we got a whiff of something foul. Kind of like a garbage can on a hot day. It came and went suddenly. We joked to each other accusing the other of passing gas. About an hour later I was at the shoreline of the lake fishing and I got a whiff of that foul smell again. So I looked around very annoyed, but I didn't detect anything. My buddy was about 75 erds away at camp as you follow the shoreline. So I grabbed my gear and headed back. In the evening we were cooking, and we heard what sounded like someone chopping wood about 200 erds up the hill behind us. We just stood up and stared in the general direction. It lasted about 10 minutes with intervals in between. I don't remember what we said to each other, but we sat back down. I only had my machete and a boning knife. No guns. We were talking and drinking when we suddenly hear this deep throaty bellow. This sound was so loud that it echoed through the hills above us. We about pissed our pants. I know for a fact we don't have any wildlife that can make that kind of noise here. Me and my buddy decided to drag the tent and stuff right up to the shore. Because whatever was out there was not going to be able to sneak up from behind. We mulled packing up and head for the truck, but it was on the other side of the lake by the forest road. It took us half an hour to hike to our campsite on day one. Then a little while later we heard the chopping wood sound but it was further away than the first time we heard it. At this point we were on edge. We were trying to rationalize what we were hearing but it didn't make sense. Then about 10 minutes later we hear footsteps approaching us from our right along the shoreline. We shined our flashlights in that direction and we saw a guy and a girl heading towards us and they shouted hey guys. They reached our camp and they looked scared. They immediately asked us if we heard a strange sound, and replied yes. So after some conversation we decided that we should band together and hike back to the forest road where our vehicles were. We got our stuff together and headed out. Right before we got to the road we heard a massive branch break and the guy's girlfriend started to run ahead of us, and we followed her. We got out of there around 2 AM and we headed to El Patrol. I've been stalked by an unknown creature before and chased by javelina, but this was one nerve-wracking experience that I will never forget. I do want to return because it is a beautiful place. I had a bad hiking experience September 9th to 10th, 2001 while I was in Yosemite. Me and my cousin decided to go hiking around an awesome place we go trout fishing. No trails, we wanted a new experience so we blazed a trail into a very remote area. My dad dropped us off at the creek on the 9th and was going to pick us up at the same location on the 10th. The day was awesome, good weather, although it was hot since the hiking was all uphill and steep. We had our goal set for the top of the mountain. But due to the thick vegetation we had to whack through most of the way, we didn't make our goal. Come evening we had made it to a part of the mountain that leveled out so we decided this was where we would stop for the night. We didn't have tents. Instead we made shelters from tarps and rope that we had taken. We made our fire and cooked up some of our freeze-dried food. By the time we got done eating it was probably around 10 PM. We were sitting around the fire just relaxing from our grueling hike to this point. The insect noise was deafening that night. 
but I started to hear this odd noise off in the distance. It raised the hair on my neck. I didn't say anything at first, I was just trying to listen closer. But soon I could tell it was getting closer. I said to my cousin, do you hear that? But he couldn't yet. I said it sounds like people talking loud and making noise out there. There is no way there are other people way out here and walking around at this hour. And all the while, it was getting even closer and he could now hear it also. And it was now clear that it was a pack of coyotes and they were headed our way. We could hear them barking, yapping, snarling and just making all kinds of noise. At this point we were both very frightened and were piling more wood on the fire hoping that would help keep them away. They got so close that I was thinking any second I'll be able to see them. They must have ran by within 20 yards of us but never came into the light of the fire. And just as quickly as they came, they went. Off into the distance until we couldn't hear them anymore. That was really scary. We didn't know if they were going to come back. Neither of us slept in our shelters that night. We even contemplated packing up and trying to find our way back down the mountain but decided that was not a good idea at all. We just sat around the fire and leaned against some trees dozing off periodically throughout the night. As soon as it was light enough to see we packed up and hiked back down. And the dogs weren't the only thing. All throughout the night I could just hear things from further up the mountain. It was very strange. The sound of trees crashing down. Something large pushing through thick brush. I won't go there again without a weapon. I was camping at Provincial Park in Yosemite during the summer with some friends. We had canoe and portage really deep into the interior of the park and chose to camp at a peninsula that had a rocky shore on one side and a sandy beach on the other. During the night one of my friend decided to shoot off fireworks, we told him to cut it out since it's not allowed and we didn't want to get kicked out. Considering how deep in the interior we were I doubt any rangers would have found us. A few hours after heading into the tent to call it a night, I heard some footsteps or something moving about in our campsite. Black bears are abundance here so of course all our food was hanging off the ground. I awoke in my friend and we both just listened to the sound of the moment from within the tent. We debated if it was maybe a park ranger who finally reached out sight to talk to us regarding the fireworks shot earlier. After a while the sound and rustles disappeared and I feel back to sleep thinking it was maybe a raccoon or something. The next morning when we awoke and we found that some things had been moved around, the strangest was a garbage bag we had left on the ground. During the night someone had picked up the garbage bag and tied it to a string we had strung between two trees to dry our clothes. Asking around no one had done it, so we reasoned it was the sound we heard last night. We considered maybe a ranger arrived and did it, but we highly doubt a park ranger would be investigating sites in the middle of the night unannounced and without using a flashlight. It wasn't so creepy but more like a mystery that happened that I have no answer for. I suspect even Bigfoot. This was about six years ago I was in a backpacking club around 20 teenagers and a handful of adults went on this particular trip in Yosemite National Park. I'm remembering. We were somewhere camping out, we had just hiked quite a few miles that day and were all pretty beat, most people were in bed at 10 pm passed out. I did not share a tent this trip with a friend like I normally did. I woke up around 2 a.m. because it sounded like someone was outside running around the tent, so of course I yell hey quit running around go back to bed. The footsteps stop for a minute and I'm trying to go back to bed, when they start up again. It sounded like someone was stomping around my tent and I'm about 50 from another tent. I just ask hey who's out there? No one replies and I'm kinda getting freaked out a bit. I've been with this group for 6 years and the adults were strict on no one getting out of bed unless you were going to shit yourself. The stomping continues for about 10 minutes then it finally stops. I was too freaked out to go outside by myself and check it out, so I just waited it out. Finally went back to bed after an hour or so. I just kept telling myself it was a wild animal running around.
creepiest thing I've encountered outdoors was at work two years ago. It was very early in the morning around 2 to 3 a.m. and I was in a very open area waiting for my boss to return with some equipment. As I was waiting I got that feeling like I was being watched by something that didn't want me there or had some intent on harming me. I stood up and looked around. The moon was very bright that night and I could clearly see all the way to the tree lines probably 50 yards on both sides of me. Nothing around me. I calmed down a bit and took my pack off my back to get my drink out. As I opened my drink I hear this whoosh 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 sound flying through the air from behind me. It was like the sound that a stick makes if you throw it overhand. I literally dove out of the way with my bag falling to the ground and my drink flying through the air spilling as I jumped away. I recover from my diving experience and take my radio out of my bag to radio my boss. I go I'm not trying to freak you out or anything but I'm on my way back to the shop. I just had something thrown at me. As I'm talking to him I'm looking around on the snowy ground for anything that could have been hurled at me. There was nothing on the ground but snow. I had no idea what the hell was going on at this point. His reply of I've already got a head start on you I'll see you there sounded out of breath like he was running. I gather my stuff and start hauling us back to the shop. I get back and meet up with my boss and he's pacing back and forth in our shop freaking out. I get him to calm down and he tells me he was on his way back up to me when he got the same feeling I got before something got thrown at me. He said after he got the feeling he stopped to look around and something clearly two-legged started walking towards him, barely crunching in the snow. Then he said it started running at him but there was nothing around him in sight. All of the sounds of movement stopped and he froze to listen for more sounds. Then he said a hot breath was hitting the back of the neck and he proceeded to freak the F out. He said he ran the whole way back to the shop and about halfway back is when he heard me on the radio. The crazy part about this whole thing is the area where we were working as several burial mounds in the woods from Native Americans. Apparently there also used to be an altar of some kind made out of stone that was buried during a construction project a few decades ago. I have two theories for this incident. 1. We both simultaneously had a 15-minute trip on acid or 2. I had a ghost hatchet thrown at me and my boss had a ghost native stalking him as a nice way of saying keep the F out. About five years ago I was living in North Texas and had discovered Lake Ray Roberts, beautiful area. On my days off work during the summer I would take a bag of bread and some snorkeling gear and go feed the fish while swimming with them, good times. Well, the last time I went there by myself I had parked my car at a hilltop parking lot and had walked down through the woods to the lake to take a swim. I had only starting swimming for a few minutes holding mushy bread under water and watching some good-sized fish come up when I started getting that watched feeling. I tried to ignore it for a while but just couldn't shake it, for some reason I started thinking alligator? And decided it just wasn't worth the risk and got out, gathered my gear and started to hike up the hill into the trees. Well, halfway up, a middle-aged guy is standing in the trail, just staring at me. I just casually changed course and thought I'd go around him. And he started walking parallel to me. Then I noticed two other guys come walking along, no one is talking to each other, but they obviously knew each other and they were all very interested in following me. Realizing I wasn't going to be able to walk around them, I just started straight up the hill to where they had stopped and were staring at me, I remember kind of smiling weird. I pulled out my dive knife and said as calm as I could to the older guy closest to me if you f with me, I'm gonna gut you. They all looked shocked at me and backed off the trail. I walked quickly past them, got to my car and drove to the highway. So, I'm pretty freaked out, shaking, and I call the cops. A sheriff's deputy came and met me on the side of the road and I told him what happened, including threatening to gut someone. He just laughed and said you realize guys go out there and hook up with each other, right? Probably thought you were cute. That's why I don't go to parks without my wife anymore.
This happened to me back in 1975. I was living in Copperas Cove, Texas at the time. There was a place I liked to go squirrel hunting that was west and kinda south of there. Don't remember exactly, but I would take Highway 190 towards Lamp Passes and then turn south on a paved road and somewhere maybe 15 or so miles out was a creek off to the left of the road that was normally dry and had trees growing along the banks. I would drive off the road and park next to the creek and walk down the dry creek bed sniping squirrels. One day I got there about an hour before dark and started walking down the creek like I always did, but got a lot further from the truck than I had realized before starting back. By the time I got to the truck it was fully dark. I stuck my .22 in the rack as I got in and cranked up and started toward home. After about a mile, I started to get this uneasy feeling. I couldn't really put my finger on it but it kept getting worse until I was actually frightened without knowing why. Something had kept trying to catch my attention and finally it suddenly did. My dash lights had made the inside of my windshield a kind of dim mirror, and I had suddenly realized that there was some sort of movement I could see in the reflection behind me. I looked over my shoulder and saw that there was a man standing in the bed of my truck right behind the cab. I could only see his legs as he was apparently bracing himself with his hands on the top of the truck. Scared the daylights out of me and without thinking, I floored the accelerator. As I was getting up to about 50 miles per hour or so I came to a fairly sharp curve to the left and I didn't slow down much. Halfway through the curve he left the bed and sailed into the darkness toward the shoulder. I didn't stop but kept going. Close to town I saw a squad car pulling out from a store of some kind and flashed my high beams and turned off and pulled up beside him where he had stopped. I told him what had happened. He asked for my license and my phone number and said he would go check it out. By now I got to thinking I may be in big trouble if the guy was hurt bad or dead, but I never heard another thing about it. Thinking back on it, maybe it was just a harmless vagrant that meant to spend the night sleeping in the truck bed. If so, I send my sincere apology to him wherever he is. At the time I was too startled to think clearly. I have only had three kind of scary things happen while camping so I will tell those since they are short stories. First one starts off about 2.5 years ago in Caroline, Virginia at a place called Falls Hole. Me and a female friend were down near the beach camping and it was about 1 am and we were just sitting up talking and getting ready to pass out when we heard a couple coyotes, I'm pretty sure they were at least, across the water. We kept hearing them but they never got too close. Didn't keep the girl from being terrified though. Another time we were up in George Washington National Forest three years ago on a hunting trip and we were really far back down the small dirt road and once you get back there you make a left on a way smaller trail that dead ends about 150 yards down. Our family has been setting up camp there for 15 plus years straight and pretty much everyone that stays there knows this. Well me, my dad and uncle were all sitting in the pop-up talking at about 1 am and we see parking lights coming down the small trail that dead ends at our camp. This is very suspicious so my dad and uncle step out of the camper, unarmed nonetheless, and I throw my boots on and toss the kel 32 in my pocket and walk out and the truck is backing up. Once they saw us come outside they put in reverse and got out of there. Best we can figure they were trying to steal our firewood. Well not exactly scary just left us a little uneasy. The last story I have just happened at the beginning of the summer. Me and a friend and his brother were going on a 5 day long kayaking trip that wasn't going to start until Tuesday morning when his brother came up on the Greyhound. So we spent Sunday and Monday scouting for where we wanted to camp every night. Well on Monday night we set up camp at a pretty nice random campground in West Virginia that was more of a permanent living place for some but the lower half beside the new river was all for tent camping. We got everything together and put up the tent and cooked dinner and all was well. It was a really nice night. The temperature wasn't bad at all, no rain, and just enough wind to keep the bugs away. Well we went to bed and right around 5 am the sun was just starting to rise and I heard a cracking noise that woke me up. 
Well I didn't hear any more after a few seconds so I figured I would be fine going back to sleep. Well about that time I heard an even louder crack and this time I could tell it was coming from the right side of the tent opposite of where I was. I sat straight up along with my friend who was on the other side of the rather large tent and sure enough we hear a huge crack and a whoosh so my friend unzips the window and the tree about 10 feet away had a large branch literally split in half and the end was laying on the ground while the two split halves were still attached to the tree. It was pretty intense and really random since there was absolutely no wind when this happened and the tree itself was full of green leaves and appeared to be healthy as can be. I'm a young fellow living in New Zealand, down past Australia for those who don't know. Generally it's full of nice people but occasionally you get a nutter, just like everywhere in the world I suppose. But anyway, a few months ago I was with some mates at the uni pub and we decided to go for a tramp in Fjordland, near Queenstown, a tourist hotspot for winter sports and beautiful lakes and mountains. Anyway, my friends went on a Friday morning and I left on the Saturday night as I had work until late and they said they'd wait around in the first hut for me. This was a serious hike through sub-zero temperatures after dark and no one around to give you a hand as it was the off-season for tramping. Anyway, I arrived in the car park about 3 a.m. on the Sunday morning, got my gear together and headed off. A few days before I left I had this creepy as dream about being stalked through the wilderness in an attempt to be killed by a stranger. Now, I'm a scientist in training, so I'm relatively sensible and well-grounded. Except on occasion I have strange dreams and get this extreme feeling of deja vu. Anyway, this is the off-season, 3 a.m. On a Sunday morning and a few degrees above zero, not the time for anyone to be out. I thought I shouldn't have been there. Because of this dream I came equipped. Better safe than sorry. I am a hunter generally rather than a tramper, when I do go tramping though I wear all my camo gear and look like a monkey but I don't really mind. But this night, I'm in all my camo, SAS issue balaclava, headlamp, pack, boots, the whole shebang. Especially due to my dream I had my best mates. My big nasty knives, a 12-inch Muella scorpion pig sticker and a Muella tactical knife. Anywho, I'm walking along, a few hours into it I was planning to walk through the night to catch up to my mates, and I keep hearing these noises. The dream springs to mind and loosen the clasp on my scorpion. Now, I was thinking this could have been anything from a wild boar to a possum, but I wanted to be ready. I keep walking with my ears working overtime. More noises every now and again, and I was freaking out inside myself, wanting to head back, but telling myself to have a concrete milkshake and harden the FK up. Anyway, I'd been walking an hour or so and I was on this straight stretch without much cover on it. About a hundred meters past where it went straight, I hear the scuff as a shoe kicked a rock in the ground about five meters behind me. I turned around so fast I reckon I almost broke the bloody sound barrier. And caught in the light of my headlamp was this guy, no pack on, trainers instead of hiking boots and jeans and a plaid shirt on, not equipped for the four day. 62 kilometers track ahead. I was almost as surprised to see him as he was to see me whip around with my foot-long knife and balaclava on. So I summoned up my gruffest and manliest voice, considering I almost wet my pants, and told him to walk in front. I let him get a good distance ahead of me but still within sight and followed. After walking another 45 minutes, I realized how cold it was. I turned back to the car and set off at a steady jog. I slept under all my gear and woke up cold, it got to minus 10 degrees Celsius. I had to ram the door of my car with my whole weight behind it to open the door and it took a few goes even then. I started early in the morning just before sunrise, I eventually got to my friends after some boot difficulties they were new and I thought it would be a good opportunity to wear them in. I ended up with a 1 inch diameter holes on the back of my feet which hurt like shit. Anyway, when I got to the hut, 16 kilometers steep hike uphill, 
I asked my mates if anyone had come through saying they encountered a crazy guys with sewn big knives and they said they hadn't seen anyone that fitted my description. On the way out though, I lagged Bahing away as my feet were killing me and my friends were eager to get back to civilization where the beer and food was. I was walking along, daylight this time, and I had the horrible feeling of being watched. This happened for a while along with rustles in the undergrowth. I just walked along making lots of noise and brandishing my knives about in plain sight saying that I couldn't wait to get to the national park and go kill some stuff. Didn't have any problems funnily enough. My dad and I were working on something in his shop which is about 150 yards from his house down towards the river bottoms and there is a small orchard fenced in between the house the shop and a forest to the north. We had been busy, probably servicing the hay cutter, when we hear a vehicle coming but we couldn't see it for the forest off to our left. Mind you by the time they are getting near us they are about three quarters of a mile down a private dirt road that twists around to get to his house. Now this could have been the neighbors or family member or somebody and at first we didn't think much of it, but as they got closer we could tell by the sound that they were driving really really slow and the road isn't that rough. We started to get worried. Then a red truck comes into view around the house heading our way and for some reason we don't want them to. We both wished we had brought a gun from the house and we were wondering where the dog had gotten off to since she wasn't barking the arrival of these people. An uneasy feeling washed over us and we armed ourselves with some tools. The big heavy kind of wrenches that grip nuts bigger than an inch and a half and are about two feet long. By now the truck had reached the gate and we can make out two scruffy looking younger men in the cab. Probably mid to late twenties but they don't see us watching them from around the farm equipment about 70 yards away. Now for some reason the driver decides he's going to get out and get the gate, why the passenger didn't I'll never know, but right as his foot touches the ground 70 pounds of German Shepherd fury erupts at his feet and he hits his head on the ceiling of the truck trying to jump back in and close the door. And we can see Riku, the Shepherd, jumping and throwing herself against window trying to get in. The truck flew backwards in a 90 degree arc and took off at about 40 miles per hour bouncing back the way they had come. The German Shepherd had stalked them for some reason instead of announcing her presence which is odd because she knew we were there and when she knows we're there she normally just barks. We really don't know what she does when we aren't there but now we have a pretty good idea. There's a hilly area on the Fort Apache Indian Reservation that makes me sweat from tension every time I go there. Something about it doesn't feel right. I've went there three times in total, and twice I got lost. One time I got lost for a good 18 hours before I found my way out, and it was during an intense snowstorm. I just get the feeling that I'm not wanted there, not necessarily spirits, but maybe some ancient deity? Who knows, but whatever it is it doesn't want people there. I've had a few incidents with my dog that have made me very nervous. He's an extension to my eyes and ears while I'm in the bush, spotting game for me and potential hazards. One trip I went out into the Sitgreaves National Forest for some snowy camping. During sunrise Caesar, my dog, woke me up as he stood up out of bed but remained by my side, letting out the nastiest barks and snarls I've ever heard come out of him. I looked around and saw a bright yellow tail disappearing into the bush. After going back to the area so many times I concluded that a mountain lion basically claimed the area. My dog does make me feel more comfortable out there though, 100 pounds Roddy is nice to have around. There's also a house in my town that Caesar will pull towards and grunt at every time we walk by it, it's also empty about 90% of the time, makes me uneasy. He's very well trained and won't leave my side, which makes this very strange. I was out camping one moonless night and was in my tent when I heard something rustling in the bushes. I went out to take a look and shine my flashlight around and saw nothing. It was quiet, too quiet. 
Five minutes later I heard it again and took another look and caught something red out of the corner of my eye so I walked over in that direction. All of a sudden I hear a loud shriek and something bursts out the bushes and runs right past me. Turns out it was a male streaker wearing nothing but a red cape, sneakers, and a bandit eye mask. The streaker went camp to camp continuing his reign of terror until someone shot him in the ass with a pellet gun. While my boy scout troop and I were at Philmont we did see one crazy thing. It was the last night of our trek, we were at the old headquarters of Philmont. We had finished all we needed to do. The sky was totally clear, you could see the Milky Way and the occasional shooting star. On the way back from a show at the cantina it happened. There was a gigantic flash of green in the sky that lasted for several seconds, it was so bright that it looked like daytime. It petered off after a second and then fell into the woods. There are other stories at Philmont that concern a Uraka Mesa. In the days of the Anasazi it was considered cursed ground, the animals behave strangely and there have been green and blue lights seen on the top of the Mesa. One particular story I heard was of two scout masters who saw a strange demon-like creature rush past them and vanish into the brush. They were spooked and ran back to their campsite. By the time they reached their tents it was dark, the scoutmasters opened their tent flap and saw two yellow eyes staring back at them from the darkness of their tent. They ran and spent the night by the campfire. I've spent quite a bit of time out in the bush by myself especially when I was a kid. My dad worked in road construction back in the 50s and early 60s so I got to see country most people only see on the telly. That solitary life in the woods and desert, well, it amazes me that I've lived as long as I have. One of the many stories I have ain't all that creepy, though I have seen bear, cougar, and have heard and seen things in the early evening in the woods that have scared the holy hell out of me. Some things people have called my imagination and others people called ghosts. I drove log truck in Idaho and I always carried my rifle with me in case I got the chance to hunt after work. One evening on my way down the mountain with my last load, I came across a game trail that looked well used. Knowing that something would be coming down toward the creek nearby, I pulled over and walked up the trail a ways. I found a good spot to take cover in and planted my myself to just sit and wait. After sitting about 20 minutes or so, I heard a chirping sound and a clicking sound coming from behind me. I slowly looked around expecting to see something but nothing was there. I went back to watching the trail and after a few minutes the sound came back again, only this time there was a rustling sound with it. Again I turned to see what it was and there wasn't anything there. Now I've seen bears up there and have had deer jump out of the brush in front of me, I damn near stepped on a buck one year before he heard me that was friggin scary, and this time I was expecting the worse. You know like stick Indians or Bigfoot or something big and hungry. After looking around for a little bit, I saw movement just out of the corner of my eye. It was a jay. Sitting about one foot above my head. Just sitting there and watching me like I had been watching that trail. He wasn't nearly as scared of me as I'm sure he thought I was of him. That's when I learned a valuable lesson. When someone tells you, don't worry, that animal is more afraid of you than you are of it. I call BS. I was at a friend's house, this was when we were teenagers. The way his land is situated, there is a very large pond separating his house and the woods. He had just had a party, and a few kids were all sleeping out under the stars by the remnants of his bonfire, on the other side of the pond, away from the house. We all felt this strange feeling of being watched, but we just ignored. Then we heard what sounded like a car coming down the gravel road towards his house. Being 2 AM we decided to check it out, and walked around his pond. To find nothing. Then, we looked across the pond at the campfire. There were six figures, standing around the campfire, walking around. We went back looking for them, but never found them creepiest thing that ever happened to me.
One time I was gathering some dried grass to use to light a fire that I had found on the upper overhang of a creek bed. This was a huge clump of tall weeds that had died and basically wilted over the edge and were hanging downward. Using both hands I clutched as many weeds in each hand as I could which caused the grass to open up in the middle. This opening was close to where my face was positioned. As I did this a huge snake slithered out and had it not been for my hand distracting him he would have struck me in the face. Carl Lewis doesn't have any record that I don't think I broke that day, as I ran a half mile under a two seconds just to make sure that snake wasn't chasing me. My friends were laughing so hard I think it took us two hours to get the fire started after that. I was sleeping in a tent on a cot in Northern Ontario one night. I used to guide for bear slash deer slash ducks slash boo, it was dead still quiet. Not even a cricket chirping. So quiet neither of my clients or I could sleep. Just had a bad feeling about it, like something was wrong. Finally drifted off to sleep about 2 colon am. Was knocked out of my cot and onto the tent floor about 15 minutes later by a large black bear. We had a small cooler with food in it in the tent, and it was at the foot of my cot. But I won't do that again. A few years ago I went for a walk in the woods behind my house. Sometimes I go in and try to stalk wildlife, like I did this day. I was dressed in camo and I snuck away from my house so my dog would not follow me and scare off any animals I might see. I had cut through a cotton field and started walking down an old fence line that went into the woods toward a creek bottom. I get almost to the creek and I hear something coming through the woods, running the same path I took. So I think it is my dog tracking me down like he always does, so I crouch down beside a bush so I can scare him when he comes running up. When the sound gets closer I look to see what it is. It turns out to be a bobcat 10 feet from me running right at me, by the time it takes me to realize what it is, he is 5 feet from me. So I jump up and holler at it. It does a 90 degree turn and shoots off like a bolt of lightning. He had no idea I was there and I scared him as much as he scared me. I think he had caught my scent and was running to get out of the area. It was funny after it happened, but it wasn't those few seconds it took to realize he was not after me. Here's a couple of my stories, most of them happen while I'm at work or adventuring off in the bush alone. 1. I'm on the number one highway, TransCanada, going east towards Brandon, I believe I was just outside of Verdun or somewhere near there. Anyways, I was working as a paver at the time. When there was no trucks for the paver I decided to walk through a wheat field and into a small bush on the other side to go take a long needed bathroom break. As I walked through the field I noticed something a little strange. Well, it wasn't too strange at the moment. But just wait. There were hundreds of little black birds sitting on a hydropole cable, they were all very silent and did not move. Okay, still not strange. As I walked past them, the section of them nearest to me jumped up a few to the next section, and that section jumped up and moved to the next section. They kept doing this until I got to the bush. Okay, I think that's very weird. But that's not even close to being as weird as what happened in a few minutes. I walked into the bush, and when I did I heard thousands of birds chirping, calling, etc. It was very surreal and very strange. But I then proceeded to urinate on a stump. After I was done I decided to take a little gander in the bush to see if there was anything interesting. I found several old stub-necked beer bottles and then as I walked to the east side of the bush. That's when I found it. What I found was a metal slash wood shack. It was probably 10 to 15 long and maybe 8 feet wide or so. It had a slanted roof on it, but it looked like it caved in. As I walked nearer to it, I felt like I was being watched. I felt a vile, filthy slime wash over me, I felt sick. It was a disgusting feeling, like your body is covered in motor oil or something. But I continued to walk closer to it, 
Even though I felt truly disgusted by the shack I wanted to investigate it further. The feeling of being watched got more intense, and as did the vile feeling. Now, I love to explore places like this, but this place creeped me out big time. I also noticed that the chirps of the birds went silent, dead silent. It was too eerie for me. But I decided to make my way into the little building. It had two broken windows and a metal screen, more like cage door, that was torn of the hinges. I got a look inside of it from a distance of 8 to 10 feet away. I wouldn't get any closer. But the inside of the shack was covered in leaf litter, dead branches and several small trees. The birds still weren't chirping, and I decided to leave, it was far too creepy for me and I decided to get back to work. As I left I constantly kept looking around me, but I couldn't see anything slash anyone. But I could still feel someone or something watching me. As I left the little bush the birds followed me and went back to their perching spot on the hydro poles, where they continued to do their little section change until I got back into the field. I didn't tell anyone at work about the incident but I did tell my girlfriend about what happened. She thought it was weird that I got such a feeling because she knows I love to explore creepy houses slash buildings slash cemeteries slash etc. I want to go back and investigate it further since I had a limited view of what was inside. But now it's snowing, so if there is anyone slash anything living there I would be able to see tracks. I have a couple more stories I'd be willing to tell if anyone is interested. This is a great thread and I hope that people will continue to post their stories. It makes for a wonderful slash creepy read. That one about the crazy guy in the mine shaft creeped the hell out of me. I'm glad you guys now bring a gun along with you. It must have been frightening. The creepiest thing that happened to me was I had gone to visited my father in Newport, Washington. And while sleepy one night as two dogs were in a kennel behind the house. They sounded like someone was tearing them apart with all the howling and yelping, they were two big Newfoundland shepherds. My father was dead to the world so I went out with a flashlight and my walking staff which had a very sharp point, and went to the kennel when I got there I shined the light into IT and the light passed THRU and lit up the biggest pair of yellow eyes I have ever seen. As soon as the light hit IT, IT turned tail and ran into the brush. Had to be one big cryptid was what I thought. Told my dad in the morn and that's what he thought so he called the sheriff and reported IT. Didn't have problem after that the whole time I was there, but it was really spooky closest I have ever come to an animal like that. On a trip down to Gettysburg, my family and I decided to eat at a restaurant that was an original house at the time, and after the first day of the battle began use as a field hospital. In the basement of the same house, a guided ghost tour began and ended. There have been numerous ghost sightings in that little basement alone. As soon as we entered, it did not feel right at all, I felt eyes on me, and could even roughly pinpoint where I felt this energy or sense coming from. I told my parents, this is wrong. They looked at me strangely and said what? I said, I feel like. They don't like this. I think the spirits who are here are insulted by the money making taking place from their deaths I had no idea where these ideas came from. I really wasn't thinking about anything close to that the moment before. My dad, ever the scientist, shrugged it off as me overreacting, but my mom is very spiritual, opposites attract, and immediately tuned into what I had to say. What's wrong? Who? She asked. I proceeded to tell her I could feel people watching me from the empty landing at the stairs and other places, and how they really wanted to be left alone. She sympathized, but we were already eating, and there was nothing she could do. It was the most uncomfortable meal of my life. I left as soon as the bill was paid, and will never go back, nor will I support the haunted tour. Shame, because the food was great, but it's not every day one feels one has communed with the dead. Thankfully. Another battlefield visit, we were in Spotsylvania at the site of the Bloody Angle. Spotsylvania is the opposite of Gettysburg, though not without memorials, 
It is lonely and peaceful. Really let someone reflect on what happened there. As I was reflecting, for the briefest moment I heard what I thought to be the din of battle. I looked up in reaction and it was gone. Spooked me, but I didn't feel the same kind of anguish or restlessness there, and that made me fairly happy. I felt like the place itself wished more people would visit, so they would know what happened. That's me. Not as freaky as some others here, but hey, it's all I got. This happened in 81 or 82. Not sure anymore. I had made friends with a fellow I worked with and offered to take him gigging for frogs. He was from the city and had never spent any time in the woods at night. The farm I had permission to do it on was only about a mile from my place. My friend showed up at 10.30 or so and I gave him a gig and a flashlight. We decided to walk to the other farm. We didn't get far before we both heard something walking in the dark to the side of us. I've been in the woods all my life and I've had plenty of deer follow me but I wasn't going to tell him that. It was clear he was getting spooked. We climbed a fence and continued on. Then we heard something else climb the fence. Deer don't climb fences. I tried looking around with the flashlight but he wanted none of it. We could see the house lights of the place we were going to and he ran off on me and beat on the guy's door until they let him in. By the time I got there Mr. Barber, the landowner, and his wife was out on the porch and wanted to know what was going on. Mr. Barber and I went back and had a look around but found nothing. My friend refused to walk back and Mr. Barber gave us a ride back to my place. We never did find out what or who it was that was following us. My friend decided that frogging wasn't for him. He has also refused to go on several fishing trips I have invited him to. I can't say I was too comfortable with what happened but I haven't let it stop me from frogging. When my husband and I were teenagers on a date we saw something in the road. It was a little animal acting weird and because he knows I love animals he stopped in front of it. This is on a small highway between Donaldson, Iowa and Keokuk. The little animal was a yellow cat dragging something. We got out to look with the headlights shining and what we saw was this adult cat dragging another one off the road. They looked identical, yellow with white and the one being dragged had been hit by a car and was obviously dead. I was really glad he was with me because he is very level-headed and calm and I am the opposite. I doubt anyone would have believed me if I was alone. This really made me believe that there is more to an animal that most people think. 2. One night after working at APAC my girlfriend and I were on our way home, it was around 11, very dark and we had about a 45 minute drive in the country. We were on back roads and there was no traffic. We saw a truck on the side of the road about 200 yards before a stop sign. As I slow for the sign my friend starts shrieking go go and of course I'm like WTF? I was 17, driving a 1987 Plymouth Champ that was a stick and not very responsive even when floored. I look out the window and there was a man running up out of a deep ditch coming at my door, about 6 feet away. She's still screaming so I look at her and see there is a man coming from the ditch running at her door too. I thought screw the stop sign and I hammered that little turd. We got away but it was super freaky. They could have been standing by the truck, why would they have been in the ditch on opposite sides of a deserted road and running at teenage girls in a tiny car? I've had a few black bear encounters when out backpacking, so I figured the heavy rustling, Pawing and snorting I heard just outside my tent in the middle of the night on a solo trip to the Trinity Alps was a Bruin. I had seen one just before dark on the other side of the Swift Creek digging for grubs under fallen logs. Being alone with no one else within 10 to 20 miles made the sighting much more intense. My brainstorm was to mark my territory around the tent. I did this right after I hung all the food and pots in a tree. When sometime after midnight that horrible snuffling ruckus commenced just inches from my scalp with only one mil of ripstop nylon between carnivore jaw and receding hairline, 
Having a large cal revolver was only slightly more reassuring than having no revolver. I didn't dare look out the tent. To even move was like being in one of those dreams where you have lead boots on. I was frozen solid. I would go in and out of the most fitful sleep and would awaken with a jolt from the most bizarre, freaky dreams. About this time last year, my girlfriend at the time and I were camping at a local campground in Pascoke, Rhode Island with some of my family and friends. I had woken up at about 5 to 5.30 in the morning to some rustling directly behind our tent. Behind our tent were some wild blueberry bushes. No fruit left though. At first I was excited, thinking here we have Bambi feeding behind our tent and how cool it would have been to open the window and see this beautiful wild animal standing two feet away from our heads. Well as soon as I tried to position myself to unzip the window, I realized Bambi wasn't Bambi. It was now a f off buck that just heard me move. And that if we had made one more noise this angry buck was coming through the side of the tent and straight for our heads. Literally two feet away. For the next few minutes we did not move a muscle or make a sound but the buck started grunting and kicking up rocks at the tent like it was nobody's business. Luckily he eventually wandered off instead of charging. That campground is loaded with deer though, saw three more there just last weekend. 